Bad night for England under 21s once again. Their European Championship hopes hang in the balance after losing their first two group stage games. So why is a group of Premier League players failing to perform at a major tournament? Is it all down to A.D. Boothroyd? Does he have to bear some respons- responsibility? Or does it does it prove the claim that actually we talk our England players up too much and actually there's better younger players around Europe and we should appreciate that? Well, it's probably a mixture of a lot of things. I think the manager has to take a, a large portion of the blame and responsibility. Um, it wasn't just losing games, the way they lost. What was it? Minimal shots on target in the two games. Didn't look creative. Well, they haven't had a shot on target from open play in 180 minutes of football. Well, that's ludicrous, isn't it, with the talent we've got available to us? I mean, I suppose he'll hide behind the fact that he hasn't had all the available players to be yeah. able to take but in the, the team. As a Smith Rowe, Hudson Adoy, McNeil, yeah. and Ketia, Godfrey. Well, Aidy Botterwood club management generally was a not a footballing manager. It wasn't somebody like to play the type of football a 21 should be playing. So he's probably caught between still in his in his heart he doesn't want to actually play the way he's trying to coach the players to play he might disagree with that but I, I don't think that the players at the under 21s probably go there f- feeling like if they play well they're going to be catapulted into the squad at the moment I don't think it. Pro- some of them probably feel like it's a bit more of a punishment uh, that's probably one aspect but Ultimately, it's not good enough and there has to be a change because you can't have the quality of squad we've got the 21s performing the way they are there's something not right fundamentally you know, there's a mindset there which isn't healthy. It's not a new mindset, though, is it? Because England have failed to win their opening group stage games at the European Championships and any of the last six under-21 uh, showings. Whilst they've not advanced past the group stage in four of their last five finals, what does that tell you about international under-21 football and the way the England players see it? Well, it tells you that the setup has certain expectations of the 21s, otherwise it wouldn't tolerate this. It's losing to Portugal in the manner they lost to Portugal... You don't think the FA care about them going out? <clears throat> well, if you're winning at 17 and 19, and the international, the first team looks like it's in, on a road to ascendancy, well, I'll debate that, but let's just assume that the 2018 World Cup was all it was cracked up to be, and we were all the things we were, <laughs> right? and we're going to do flying out of the blocks in the, championship, in the European Championships, then the first team's doing well, so why is the 21s the level that is falling down. I was just two things. One, I think it's an environment that people don't particularly think is aspirational or aspire to be in. They see it as somewhere where they're having to be rather than where they want to be. They'd rather be in the full team or or, or they're finding themselves in the 21s because of a consequence. So it's the players' problem? Uh, well, I think at, at, in part it's the players' problem, but then the bigger problem is the manager's job is to ensure that those players understand where they are in the food chain, why they're in the 21s, what the value of the 21s is. Because once upon a time... You know, many, many years ago when you had people like Terry Venables that were involved in the under-21s and other people like Dave Sexton, it was an environment where you progressed through to get to the first team, to get to the full national side. The under-21s, the under-23s that were eventually scrapped and then became the national, the full side. But that's kind of what's <coughs> happened, isn't it? I mean, well, with the England team at the moment. Well, yes, but what we're saying is, is why is the 21s routinely, systematically and endlessly failing? Right. And, and, and and we're trying to put our finger on what is happening to the players that clearly have creative capabilities that are playing domestic football at the highest level for big clubs, yet when they're turning up for the national side, the 21s doesn't seem to operate at a level of acumen or competency that we would expect from an elite footballing nation like ourselves. You can understand why A.D. Boothroyd's getting a lot of stick this morning. A lot of our texts and tweets are all about A.D. Boothroyd, and if you want to contribute to this debate, you can do. It's 8.1089 on the text. You can tweet us at Sam Matterface or at TalkSport. You can get in touch via the phones as well, 08717 Or you can comment below on the uh, live stream that we've got on Twitter, Facebook, or on YouTube. Um, The reason he's getting a lot of stick is because of his team selection and the way he has behaved. If you go back to the last European Championship, he left Phil Foden out of a game that he really needed to win. He left out Dwight McNeil and Callum Hudson-Odoi last night. He called up Todd Cantwell at the very last minute for this squad and then hasn't used him. Uh, You can understand why people were sort of raising an eyebrow. Yeah, I think some of his selections have been questionable. I think also as well, to give it some context, the more we talk and think about it, I mean, Gareth, Gareth Southgate and his staff aren't shy in bringing young players through so that they do keep an eye on the 21s but I think this particular tournament or these qualifiers have come at a time in the season where a lot of players have are desperately some of the players sorry are desperately wanting to be in that first Simon alluded to the, the England first team squad so there's some disappointment in there in in some of the players some of the other players haven't been playing a lot at club level um, and Ketty would be a good example of that 
you know, he hasn't played for how long in the Arsenal team and then he's going to the 21s and expected to produce his best form, which is difficult. So why are you playing him? Play someone who's playing every week. He might argue the players aren't there who are playing every week. So it's a balancing act. But, uh, but the timing of it isn't great for, for the manager. But ultimately, the job of any manager, whether it be international level, under 21s, club level, is to motivate the group you've got, understand their mentality. And, and find a way of getting them to perform at their best. And if that means taking players who are a little bit younger and not as established and more hungry, do that. If you can't get a tune out of the players you're bringing in because of whatever, then you're responsible as the coach. It's what, as simple as that. What was your feeling about playing for the England under 21s? I was, I was, <laughs> I was a bit different because I wasn't, I wasn't um, an established young Premier League player. I was trying to make my way. So being in England under 21s for me was a huge thing, you know. Desperately wanted to play, desperately wanted to try and show what I've got. I was I was very fortunate in the quality but that was around me. It was competitive, but it, it we we pushed each other mm. because of the amount of competition for places. Um I think now there's also a bit of a mindset change in some of the not all, but some of the players where they there's a little bit of entitlement comes into play where you think well, what am I doing here? I'm better than this. I'll be, you know, I'm playing for Chelsea Saturday. Now I'm playing for the 21s. This this ain't me. Um, I remember even Michael Owen had, had burst on scene for England, didn't he? And, and it, from, what was he, 18? Mm. Scoring goals, World Cup. At the World Cup, yeah. He ended up dropping into the 21s to play for a couple of games in a couple of qualifiers it was. And he went and scored a couple in both and showed the right attitude. And then he got taken back up. That's that's what you have to do. And that was Michael Owen. I think it was Carra Road he dropped in for a qualifier <laughs> and went and won the game for them, scored two and... You know, How do you make your argument, Sam? You talk about A.D. Boothroyd's choice, right? He played Dwight McNeil and Colin hudson Doy against Switzerland. So they weren't particularly compelling in that result. So what did they do? They get a reward or do you change it up? They got picked against the Switzerland game. That was his standout team. That was the team he was starting the tournament with. Mm. Often the team you start the tournament with is your blueprint, the one mm. you want to play. That's the, that's the marker you're putting down to these it players. It looked a bit defensive to me when I watched the game. But why, not, well, so why was Ben Godfrey playing right back when he spent the last three months playing centre-half? You know, things like that jump, jump out to me. I know he can play right back, but he's been superb at centre-half for Everton. You know, really playing well. Actually, there was talk of him getting a call-up to the first team. Well, you take him to the 21s and you throw him in at right back, where he doesn't really want to play, by the way. He, you know you know that when you speak, you can hear him. Not, he, he, he wants to play centre-half. He made his debut against Liverpool at right back, didn't I know he? he? Does. It was the and first did... time in three years he'd played there. Yeah, he doesn't want to play at right back. So you've got a lad who's probably a little bit disappointed at not being in the first team squad. And then you say, tell you what, do me a job at right but back. We, but specifically and explicitly, I'm addressing Sam's point about tense, offensive players and the lack of shots on goal, mm. the lack of quality, the lack of ambition. Put aside the defensive frailties or the mispositioning of certain players and look at the offensive opportunities. Mm. We Manager's 12... responsible for tactics, though. Sure, sure, yep. sure, sure. But we had 12 shots on goal against Switzerland, one on target. We had 67% of the possession. I know the stats can show passive respect possession and aggressive possession but you've got offensive players that would have been on the ball for more than Switzerland were and they didn't do it against Switzerland so he took them out against the Portuguese now you can say what do you do you patronise it to be able to get these players to where you want them to be or do you consequence them for not grasping the nettle in the first game it's a balancing act but if, if, if one set of players isn't performing and you bring in another set of yep. players and they don't perform yep then where does the well, where, where, that, where does the, the analysis constant theme, then go? The constant theme is if at, the, at the end the, of the day every single argument includes one person, under, that person is the common exactly, theme. Exactly, the yeah? question has to go So to we're him, saying, right? and again the bigger question, the elephant in the room is, let's put it out there, why has Andy Boothroyd got the job in the first place? Because the credentials are Andy Boothroyd. Well, you can, you can put that question out again, is why has Gareth Southgate got the job in the first place? Because the management criteria that these two guys have exhibited don't put you into the, the fact that they should be national team managers. Yeah, but the, he's taken England to a, a World Cup semi-final. And on, uh, yeah, but we can spin that narrative, beat a bunch of teams that we should have beat, yeah. that everyone should have beaten when they were managing I think that they side. Did, did, you the World did. did you watch the World Cup? I did watch the World Cup. Sorry, just quickly on that. I think the one difference with that is at least Gareth Southgate, you know, he played international football. He'd managed at least at a level where he tried Tried to play football, yeah. And I, I take your point on board, sign. You're right, but Aidy Bosfroyd, historically, is not a manager who wants his teams to play the way yeah, but, the twenty ones play. But with respect, Danny, you can turn around and say Jose Mourinho didn't play at the top level. Neither did certain managers like Arsene Wenger that have gone on and produced the most elite teams. You can't add the narrative that just because you played once upon a time as a top footballer, you understand. He played for Aston Villa. He played for Middlesbrough. And he played for Palace. And he he for didn't England. play for the big. Yeah, he did. And he played under Venables. But you, but you can, all, you nice can also turn around and say that Gareth Southgate was an average international footballer. 